Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show. I'm your host, Sarah Bant. I'm a health coach, natural supplement expert, and a busy mom of three. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you're notified every week with my new podcast on Mondays and Tuesdays. And if you haven't already, join my free group coaching on Telegram with the link below. There's no downside. I teach you on a daily basis with tips and tools to enhance your health. And you will be a part of a like-minded group to support you on your journey in addition to truly taking control of your health. The protocols and supplements I discuss are all found at sarahbantahealth.com. Today, we are talking about children, weight loss in children, and weight loss injection alternatives. And whenever we're talking about kids, there is a soft spot in my heart because I have three and I see how much their lives are not in their control. So what happens to them is our fault, right? So we need to take responsibility and we are talking about obesity. It is a true pandemic for children. According to the CDC, one in five adolescents in the United States is affected by obesity and rates are continually rising. In January, the American Academy of Pediatrics released its first comprehensive guidelines to treat obesity in children in response to these growing numbers. As a result, weight loss injections have been developed to rapidly reduce the rate of obesity. And these are happening with the adults as well. But now we're talking about the kids. The problem with these weight loss injections is that they're being seen as a quick fix, a shortcut cut to weight loss, when in fact, successful long term weight loss requires not only a cycle, a physiological change, but a psychological one as well. It truly is worrisome that a 12-year-old can now legally be given weight loss injections to conquer their obesity, and even more concerning that the parents are flocking in numbers to do it and not actually have their children change their lifestyle or looking at maybe the causes of what's going on. So Wagovi is the first once weekly weight loss injection approved for adolescents. It's an injectable diabetes drug under the generic name semi-glutide, just like Ozempic, and it's approved for children 12 and up with obesity. Due to popular demand, it's now listed by the FDA as being in a supply shortage so that the people with actual diabetes don't get the drug, right? So there's problem number one. How semi-glutide works. It works by mimicking the effects of GLP-1, a hormone that slows the movement of food through the intestines, making a person feel full longer. Well, great. Okay. But what else does it do? Like Ozempic, like they all work, they work by activating that GLP-1 receptor in the pancreas, which increases insulin secretion and decreases glucagon secretion. This leads to a decrease in blood sugar levels, which is beneficial for people with type 2 diabetes who have high blood sugar levels, high insulin levels, and this is where um, we need to focus on, right? We need to look at the root cause and not just the drug. The side effects of weight loss injections in children. Among other side effects that I've talked about, and I've, I've gone over this in a few podcasts, so if you missed them, make sure you look at them at the different um, alternatives for adults, the other side effects, and what you can do uh, in an alternative way. But among the other side effects, medical experts are warning that Wagovi and similar fat loss injections may cause a potentially deadly side effect overlooked in trials. In the experiments performed on mice, the enlargement of the intestine 
occurred around 20 months of taking a semi-glutide. The research team points out that clinical trials for Wagovi only went up to 16 months, missing the significant long-term side effect. So this is bringing up the fact that these drugs have not been tested long-term. Okay, let's let that sit for a minute. And after the last three years, I hope we're waking up to what happens when you get a drug approved before um, the long-term side effects are even looked at. Because these drugs could cause continuous increases in the intestinal length and villus height, the small intestine may become more in a more or less elastic, sorry, more inelastic so it can't move which can lead to long-term upper intestinal obstruction. I don't know about you, but my gut, I'm protecting it with my life because leaky gut is so prevalent. Constipation, diarrhea, bloating, all of these issues almost every adult is suffering from. So if you're giving your child an injectable drug when they're growing, when they're in their formidable years that could be causing these intestinal issues on top of what their diet is already doing and what us adults are suffering from, it's only going to get worse. And it's leading them into a life of uncomfortable bloat and intestinal issues. But that's just if it doesn't get serious. Intestinal obstructions occur when that blockage keeps food and liquid from moving through the intestines. This can be caused by damage to the digestive system, cancer, or an inflamed or stretch intestine. Loss of appetite and constipation can be signs that someone's suffering from this blockage. The blockage may occur when the intestines stretch too large as it loses its ability to adjust its shape, making it difficult for the food to pass through. This condition may cut off blood supply to part of your intestine with the lack of blood causing that intestinal wall to die. Sufferers even the children with intestinal obstructions are also at risk for um, some a potentially deadly infection within the abdominum. So if things aren't moving, that's when inf infection and bacteria like ferment and, and grow and grow and grow. Also, what else other supplement or what other side effects could children uh, get from taking Wagovi? Weight gain after stopping the medication. So you tell me if you're a parent that have gotten your child into being obese and you give them this medication, where are you going to start teaching the lifestyle changes that they need to get the keep that weight off? When when these children or adults stop these medications, the weight gain is, is coming right back and it's bringing some friends. And the weight loss is fat and muscle. The weight gain is all muscle and more. So you're getting weight gain. You're, you're losing muscle. Doctors are reporting that patients lose more muscle than fat while taking the drug. You have risk of diabetic retinopathy, gallstones, abdominal pain, kidney problems, including kidney failure, swelling of the pancreas, increased risk of thyroid cancer. The thyroid's the master endocrine gland. You know I love my liver, but I also love my thyroid. You got to take care of both of them. So this drug is increasing your risk of thyroid cancer, not just thyroid uh, malfunction, but actual cancer. Gallbladder disease, increased heart rate and blood pressure, allergic reactions, hypoglycemia, nausea. Oh yeah, you might be nausea and nauseous. You might throw up a little bit, but it's okay because you're losing weight, right? Let's look at the quality of life here, guys. It's not just about looking good in a bathing suit. Okay, nausea, reflux, headaches, diarrhea, vomiting, blurred vision. So your, your vision's blurred. You can't see in school, and but it's okay because you're losing weight. No, not okay with me. Confusion, slurred speech, numbness. So what is the root cause of obesity? So now that I've told you all of the side effects and all the things to look out for, 
we want to look at the root cause of obesity. You don't lose weight to get healthy. You get healthy to lose weight. Insulin resistance and fatty liver are the real cause of obesity. The root cause of the problem is an obesity. It's a metabolic disease involving the insulin resistance and non-alcoholic fatty liver. Treating obesity is like giving aspirin to someone with a brain tumor for their headache. According to Robert Lustig, aspirin will help the headache, but won't help the tumor. The brain tumor is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Obesity is the headache. So the diseases contributing to obesity and children, there are two, and I just mentioned them. Type 2 diabetes, fatty liver disease. These diseases did not exist in children before 1980. They are starting to infiltrate our children with the introduction of processed foods containing excess fructose and the inflammatory seed oils. And the problem with these processed foods is it's normal. It's normal to send your kid to school with a juice box and goldfish and a, a juice squeeze, right? That's normal. And that's the problem. And if your child is eating healthy whole foods, they're not normal. And this is where we've got to turn things around. The processed foods incorporate, it, incorporate poisons that stuff the liver or remove the fiber that starves the gut or both. So minimally processed whole foods like white rice affect the liver, while fruit juice affects the gut. Ultra processed foods like Pringles and um, Dairy Queen and pizza do both and exponentially increase these diseases so much faster. And as a result of eating the above food types, the liver gets backed up, detox pathways are clogged, and sugar turns into fat. Furthermore, our gut needs fiber to munch on, and they are starved of the food that, stri that is stripped of the fiber. Bacteria start eating the mucin barrier of our intestinal cells instead, and then that is leading to inflammation and leaky gut. And then what happens is the ultra-processed food is also connected to higher rates of addiction, depression, insomnia, and autoimmune disease. How many of your kids are addicted to social media, suffer, suffering from anxiety and depression, having ADHD, all of these issues? It's like this domino effect and you don't know where to stop it. And so of course, you're like, just please help me. Let's just give them a shot and answer. That's the answer to all of our questions, but it's not. That answer is only taking care of the weight and the wrong weight. There are children that are thin on the outside and fat on the inside. Science calls them TOFI, T-O-F-I. And these children have fatty liver, but not obesity. Prior to 1980, fatty liver disease was only due to alcohol and only found in adults. Now fatty liver is present in 25% of children. So let's look at the facts. 25% of children have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. 45% of adults have fatty liver disease. And I'm not talking about the alcoholics here, you guys. 67% of the food that our kids are eating is processed food. That is not real food. So less than what is that? 33% of food is actual real food that our kids are eating? There are obese children without metabolic disease. There are thin children with metabolic disease. So it's not just that the obesity is the disease. That is why we need to look at the fatty liver disease and the insulin resistance. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is associated <clears throat> with diabetes, even in people with healthy weight range. And if you have fatty liver, you're 3.5 times more likely to develop diabetes. When the pancreas releases insulin, it goes to the liver. The liver is the primary target of insulin. Triglycerides, which is something you can get tested on your blood test, are a better indicator of metabolic disease. And if the triglycerides are high, 
the liver is sick. If the liver is sick, the pancreas is sick. If the pancreas is sick, metabolic disease is present. You see how that works? Processed foods increase BMI. Okay, so all of these facts are leading to the fact that we need to look at fatty liver disease and insulin resistance. It isn't just about the sugar and carbs, but the type of sugar and carbs and the high fructose uh, consumption in the modern day diet is processed differently in the liver, causing liver fat. Okay, so metabolic syndrome. This is a cluster of conditions that occur together, increasing your risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. It includes diabetes, hypertension, lipid abnormalities, cardiovascular disease, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is the number one cause of infertility, cancer, and dementia. None of these diseases have any cures, just treatments. So how are we going to cure all of these diseases? We're going to go back to the, the two causes, right? Conditions that lead to these diseases re related to metabolic syndrome are glycation, oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, which I talk a lot about mitochondrial health, insulin resistance, membrane instability, that's the phase angle, that's the, the flexibility or rigidity of our cells, the walls of our cells, inflammation, methylation, autophagy. Those are all the conditions that lead to these diseases related to metabolic syndrome. Weight loss is a health issue. It isn't just about vanity, it can be more critical and it, it's related to these diseases, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, thyroid conditions, osteoporosis, arthritis, brain fog, cognitive decline, cancers, and more. Okay, so the causes of obesity in children, we've touched on it, but we're going to go through it again. Processed foods and fructose. The processed foods are taking out the fiber, which slows down the rise of glucose. So say you eat an apple you have this blunt of the fiber and the pectin in the apple to slow the rise of the apple, right? And the blood, slow the rise of insulin and um, blood sugar. When you take that same apple, you take the fiber out and you make it into apple juice. It's like putting cocaine into your veins. It's like, boom, and down. And you have a, this really high peak of blood sugar and insulin raise and a, a decrease. And when you drink apple juice, you're drinking like 10 apples at once. When are you able to sit down and eat 10 apples? It might be pretty difficult. Actually, they did a study with oranges and orange juice and the children, I believe it was at like three or five oranges, they started throwing up because they couldn't eat that much, right? But they had no problem drinking the same amount of calories in juice from that same amount of oranges. So that just shows you that the fiber is telling your body, I've had enough. So we have this innate ability to tell our brain we've had enough and to shut off the cravings. Well, when you take out the fiber, this takes that um, innate uh, mechanism out of the equation. Then they add in the, in the processed foods, they add the hidden high fructose corn syrup and fake sugars that solicit an insulin response, causing the body to crave more sugar. Not just the cakes and cookies, but this is in the meats, the dairy, the protein snacks. The food companies inject these foods with high fructose corn syrups the GMOs and hidden uh, sweeteners, knowing that these make the foods more palatable and addictive, leading to increased uh, consumption and leading to insulin resistance, then leading to sick livers, then leading to obesity. And some of these hidden sweeteners aren't meant to actually even taste good. They're meant to hit your gut. And then your gut tells your brain that you want more. And this is happening subconsciously, you don't even know it because it doesn't even taste as sweet as the hidden sugars are telling your gut it tastes. So they're tricking you, right? They all, their goal is for you to buy more processed foods. 
The processed foods not only increase the appetite with the hidden sugars, tricking the brain that it wants more, but they deaden the ability of the gut to release that awesome hormone called CCK that tells the brain to shut off appetite. That hormone, CCK, is only triggered by amino acids from protein and, and omega-3 fatty acids. Those are absent in most um, processed foods. But even if you eat your healthy protein, the CCK isn't triggered because the processed food has actually ruined that trigger. Then what happens is you have an unhealthy liver. The liver gets compromised by toxins, processed foods, and excess estrogens. The liver's where the insulin does its job. The liver is fatty. If When the liver is fatty, it doesn't do its job very efficiently, and that's why you got to love your liver. Also, the liver is where fat and proteins get broken down into usable energy. It's also where the thyroid hormones turn from the inactive thyroid hormone into the active thyroid hormones for a healthy metabolism. This is separate from the fact that the spike protein has caused all of our livers to be backed up even more, to be working even more, to be stressed and burdened, and it's just trying to get a break. And now with the processed foods, it is having to work even harder. Insulin resistance. So the insulin resistance occurs when the body cells become less responsive to the hormone insulin, which is responsible for regulating the blood sugar levels. And when this happens, the pancreas produces more insulin to compensate for the decreased sensitivity of the cells. Over time, this can lead to a, an elevated insulin level in the bloodstream. And insulin's job is to store and make fat. Therefore, when insulin resistance is present, the liver suffers, obesity becomes more likely. <clears throat> insulin resistance is like you being the mom yelling at your kids, and I know you all know what I'm talking about. You yell, you yell, you yell. They stop listening. Then you come in the back door, you have your husband and daddy come in the back door and whisper to the kids and they listen, right? Because it's a different voice and it's a different way of hearing the message. Well, when you are screaming and screaming and screaming at the, at the cells to let the sugar into the cells, it becomes resistant. It says, I don't want to listen to you anymore. You're just sending way too much sugar my way. I can't do it. I'm done. I'm going to become resistant and resistant and resistant. I don't care if you ground me or what you do to me. Um, I'm not going to listen anymore. That's insulin resistance. There are several ways in which that insulin resistance can lead to obesity. It increases appetite. Elevated insulin levels can stimulate the appetite and lead to increased food take particularly the high carbohydrate, high fatty foods. So now our kids with insulin resistance are wanting and craving more of those fatty and, and processed foods. And this can result in a positive energy balance, meaning you're taking in more than you're burning and more calories consumed leads to weight gain. Then you also have reduced fat burning. Insulin resistant can, resistance can impair the body's ability to burn fat for energy, particularly in the abdominal area. And this can lead to an accumulation of the excess fat, body fat, particularly in visceral fat stores around the internal organs, which is associated with an increase of metabolic disorders like diabetes and cardiovascular disease. It is the dangerous fat. So then you also have impaired energy metabolism. Insulin resistance can also impair the body's ability to use glucose for energy, leading to reduced energy levels and physical activity. And this can contribute to a sedentary lifestyle. This is why our kids then become couch potatoes, surfing Instagram and Facebook or Snapchat, whatever it is, and they don't wanna get off the couch. And then you've got a decreased calorie expenditure, further exacerbating this positive energy balance and weight gain. Leptin. Leptin resistance is associated with insulin resistance. Leptin is a hormone 
produced by the fat cells that signals to the hypothalamus in the brain to suppress or activate the appetite and metabolism. And the more food consumed, the more body fat accumulated, the more leptin is produced signaling to the brain to suppress the appetite, increase the metabolism and burn more body fat. Well, that's great if it works. However, when there's too much leptin, just like when there's too much insulin, the signals fail to work and the brain becomes resistant to leptin messages. In other words, it's like when the insulin resistance becomes resistant and the fat cells continue to produce an abnormally amount and the receptor essentially downgrades their response. As a result, the more weight gain, the more fat stores, are accumulated and the body thinks it's starving. And then you're more hungry and it's this vicious cycle. Even though there's plenty of energy in the fat stores to burn, the hunger is high and it's difficult to fight that unsatiable appetite. That is why our kids sometimes will say, I cannot get full, I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm starving. Now we have this amazing thing called radiation in our lives that is making things even worse. Ionizing and non-ionizing radiation from the smart meters, 5G, smart devices, flying, x-rays, and more have increased exponentially compared to just 10 years ago. And this is even more present for our children who are addicted to their smartphones. Radiation is known without food to cause insulin resistance, cancer, leaky gut, weight gain, hypothyroidism, depression, anxiety, and even increased blood sugar. Yes, just by using your phone, not eating a morsel of food, you are increasing your blood sugar. You're increasing your insulin resistance and you're increasing your weight gain. Those are some pretty um, depressing facts. Then you've got the toxins. And there's just like the radiation, the toxins found in our food supply, environment, and water are all putting a heavy burden on our kidneys and liver to filter them out. And this is why it's imperative that you are eating organic and following the accelerated food guide. Um, I talk to my kids about it till I'm blue in the face. And they say, well, I don't understand, mom you know, you didn't have to eat like this. I said, you're right. I didn't have to eat like this 30 years ago because we didn't have the levels of radiation and toxins and fluoride and bromide and chlorine in our foods. And that this is a, a threat that we are under um, that is, is unlike ever before. And that is why we have to be persistent and really smart and proactive about what we're doing and our diets, our environmental diets, our food diets, our lifestyle diets. Hypothyroidism. So as the toxins may be clogging the thyroid, like the bromide, the chlorine, the fluoride, the liver and the detox pathways, all of them, the thyroid hormones aren't able to convert the inactive T4 into the active T3. And that's assuming that the T4, which is supposed to represent tyrosine and four molecules of iodine, but if you're deficient in iodine, did you know that T4 could actually be representing four molecules of other halogens like bromide or chlorine or fluoride? Most doctors don't know that. So then if it's not iodine, then it can't even convert into the T3, which is three molecules of iodine for metabolism and fat burning and energy. We need that iodine, but we also need the to get rid of the toxins that are causing um, the issues with the thyroid. So that is going to lead to slow metabolism, fat accumulation, water retention, and constipation. Hypothyroidism is also connected to iodine deficiency as iodine is known to help with boosting the metabolism, fat oxidation, and fat burning. And hypothyroidism has increased significantly. I believe it's over nine out of 10 people now, especially adults, have hypothyroidism. And that's where this unexplained weight gain is coming in. 
So what are the weight loss injection alternatives to combat childhood obesity? I always have a solution. I'm not going to just bring the problems, right? The goal is to improve children's health and lower obesity, but it starts with protecting the liver, feeding the gut, resetting insulin sensitivity. Considering children have a low tolerance for supplements and dietary changes, the following tools are outlined in order of priority. Believe me, I'm a mom. I understand what it takes to get a kid to eat differently than their friends, to do different than their friends, to get off the social media, to actually think with their brain in school, to go to practice with good energy. So what is the number one tip as a mom? And my kids are 20, 18, and 16. So they're out of my control now. The only real thing that I can use as a tool of bargaining is their phone. But let me tell you, it starts when they're young, you guys. Start when they're in preschool. Start when they're younger in preschool if you have the opportunity. Now, if you have only teenagers and you're saying, well, Sarah, I've missed the window. I have no control of my kids. That's not true. Who's paying for their car? Who's paying for their phone? Who's paying for their room? Who's paying for um, their 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 spending money when they're riding their bikes with their friends? Who's packing their lunches? You guys are in control, and you don't have to scream and yell at your children. But what you need to do is explain the why, the psychology of tackling the issue. When discussing the lifestyle and dietary changes, you must also always explain to them the why and the benefits of swapping out processed foods with real foods in addition to the benefits of supplements and use the facts to explain that they'll get improved energy, less depression. Do they want to get off their antidepressants? Do they want to get off their anxiety um, drugs? Do they want to get better grades? Do they want to be the star football player? Do they want to look good in their bathing suit? Whatever is their complaint in their words, I can tell you from my own personal um, experience, I have one daughter who loves the way she looks. She has no issue with her body image. So that's not going to be her why, right? What is going to be her why is her painful menstrual cycles. And by eliminating processed foods, taking the right supplements, eating the way I need her to eat, she's going to reduce inflammation and have a cycle that's less painful. She's also going to be able to perform at nationals for rowing and actually medal and do well and beat out some of her teammates on the team. That is her why. I've got a son who's 20 years old. At nine years old, you've heard my story. He had leukemia. He's not rowing anymore. He doesn't have a weight loss issue. But what he does have in the back of his mind is this goal to live life to its fullest, to um, never get cancer again, to have a family and thrive and go for a mountain bike ride and skiing and hiking all in the same day and maybe throw in a gym session because he's got that much energy. And you can't do that when you're eating crap. You can't do that when you're eating processed foods, when you're sitting in your room on social media and you're feeding into the fear, the anxiety, the depression, and the sedentary lifestyle. So that's his why. I've got another daughter who's off to school, college. She's going to be rowing at the collegiate level. You better believe she better be able to perform to compete with all of these other high elite athletes. That's her why. And she's going to be um, challenged academically beyond what she ever has been before. That's her other why. So what is your child's why? And it's going to change whether they're in preschool, elementary school, junior high, high school, their why is going to change uh, uh, across the years. So you've got to speak to them intentionally 
and talk about their why and get them on your team to make the changes together. And you and whoever else is in the house has to be doing the same thing. You can't be telling them to eat a certain way, take supplements and you not do it. So what are the key supplements to support weight loss in children? And we want to do the maximum. So the following supplements work synergistically to help maximize weight loss, fat loss, and reverse insulin resistance, reverse fatty liver disease, but maintain muscle mass and support insulin sensitivity, increase energy so they get off the couch and help them feel their best. And it also will help with their anxiety, depression, and ADHD, which all kids seem to be suffering from now. Number one, accelerated keto. This is flipping the body into ketosis or fat burning within 30 minutes and starts teaching the body to burn its own fat. So that is the first quickest way to burn the excess calories, lower blood sugar and insulin levels, break up the liver fat, suppress the appetite while maintaining high levels of stable energy. And it's also going to calm their brain down, help with their depression and anxiety. So for children, taking the accelerated keto combined with just 12 to 16 hours of intermittent fasting, not these long-term intermittent fasting windows like, like adults can do. Because remember, these kids are growing. So they do need to be eating healthy foods um, and not intermittent fasting too long, especially if they're athletes. But you support that with a low carb, high wild animal protein diet, the bison, the deer, elk, um, wild fish, whatever they like. And there's so many sources out there. And now super excited. I'm working with northstarbison.com. The, the link will be below and you can use coupon Sarah Banta for 10% off, but they provide jerky and um, bison sticks that taste great, bratwurst, hot dogs, burgers, all of these things your kids won't know they're not eating beef. And they have fish, they've got all types of meat, they even have grass-fed beef, which is a, a great alternative as, as well. The additional ingredients in the accelerated keto also help break down the saturated fats that have built up in the liver. And this will help burn the dangerous visceral fat around the belly and the liver fat that lead to insulin resistance and obesity. The more your children's liver is defatted and clogged, the better it can work at reversing insulin resistance, burning that belly fat, and also helping with the thyroid conversion from T4 to T3. So you're going to increase your metabolism with the help of increasing your thyroid. It also includes a compound known as HMP, which maintains muscle mass while just targeting the fat for loss. And with that healthy muscle, more mitochondria with increased ATP is sustained so that you actually have more energy at the cellular level. There's also some other ingredients in there that gives you this amazing digestive fire, breaks down the fat even more, gives you an extra set of ketones for energy, and kids really do feel great on it. Then you want to make sure every kid, whether they're obese or not, um, take their accelerodyne iodine. This increases ATP at the cellular level by 18 times, and that will increase fat oxidation, metabolism, caloric burn, cognition, physical energy, wound healing, and that healthy apoptosis, the damage done to the DNA by the mRNA and spike protein is starting to reverse with the accelerodyne iodine, and it helps with anxiety and depression. Did you know that most children who are depressed are deficient in iodine? And you add in the radiation and the toxins from all of the halogens and from social media, if you bathe your body in accelerodyne iodine, it's going to kick out those toxins and prevent the downside of um, what you get from the side effects from radiation and those toxins. Apoptosis is imperative during puberty in children. Okay, apoptosis happens during lifetime, but it's most active when you're pregnant and then when a child is in their puberty years. Thus, the accelerodyne is key, the key supplement, not just for weight loss, but for that healthy growth during this integral period of time. 
ATP is that true cellular energy. And when ATP increases, energy and fat oxidation increase, leading to the fat loss in children. So it's going to improve their brain, their body, their thyroid, and protect them from that awesome Instagram that they're on all day long, right? Number three, accelerated thyroid. Most children with weight gain have suboptimal thyroid function and metabolism. And accelerated thi thyroid is the most comprehensive thyroid supplement. It helps increase metabolism, fat oxidation, energy, and weight loss. Unlike any other thyroid supplement, accelerated thyroid, just like the Acceleridine and Accelerated Keto and all of the accelerated supplements, they are enhanced with scalar frequencies to heal the body. And the Accelerated Thyroid's scalar frequencies help detox the thyroid from heavy metals and radiation in addition to truly healing the thyroid. The fourth supplement, which is the hidden hero in so many things that are going on in your body, is the accelerated copper. Now, accelerated copper is the only copper with 100% absorption. Most copper supplements only have 5 to 10%, and it's made with the proprietary scalar technology enhanced with frequencies to increase its efficacy. But why am I bringing up copper? It's amazing for the immune system, amazing for hair and skin and eyesight, but it helps decrease uric acid and obesity through a few different ways. And I'm going to be diving into uric acid and its connection to insulin resistance, fatty liver, and obesity. So stay tuned for that. But copper helps decrease obesity, uric acid, insulin resistance and fatty liver in a few different ways. It number one blocks the polyol pathway, which is responsible for converting glucose into sorbitol and fructose. So in addition to eating fructose causing fatty liver, you've got glucose that can turn into sorbitol and fructose as a double whammy if you don't have enough copper. Now, copper gets depleted by GMOs and glyphosate. Our ancestors didn't have the glyphosate or the GMOs or the antibiotics that disrupt this copper or take away the copper in our body. So they didn't have this issue. But now we have all of these threats that are depleting our copper stores. And then this is what happens is there's an increase in conversion into fructose, making uric acid increase, making fat gain increase and obesity. Then with all, also without copper, not only does uric acid increase and fat gain increase, but triglycerides and liver fat increase, fatty liver and triglycerides are what lead to obesity. Also, the body cannot metabolize fat without copper. During um, the last three years, the spike protein has depleted our ability to metabolize fat. And it's also taking out copper. Now, also an interesting fact is everyone was high dosing with zinc. Zinc and copper compete with each other. So if you're high dosing in zinc for the last three years, guess what else has gone down? Your copper stores. So then that's another reason you need to be supplementing with copper. Copper inhibits something called the PDE3 enzyme, which is an enzyme that blocks fat burning. And if the body can't block PDE3, then it can't burn fat. Next, low levels of cellular copper make fat cells even fatter by altering how they process their main metabolic fuels, such as fat and sugar. And then it also increases fat burning. Copper increases fat burning mechanisms throughout the body. It also helps regulate iron in the blood, which is the root cause of oxidative stress. We are not anemic from not enough iron. I, our, our iron in our body just can't get to where it needs to go. And the hidden key is the copper. The key unlocks the door to get the iron to where it needs to go. With the And the root cause of, cop, of oxidative stress is iron in the wrong places. So with less oxidative stress, there's less uric acid, less propensity to have um, obesity. Okay, so those are the main supplements that are needed for weight loss. You've got the accelerated keto, accelerated iodine, 
the accelerated thyroid, the accelerated copper. Now, additional supplements for enhanced results for adults and children and for overall health, the accelerated cellular detox powder. This coats the stomach and the intestinal lining, reduces inflammation, helps with bloat and regularity, and it just makes you feel good. It can soak up the toxins that you are taking in throughout the day that are causing the unexplained weight gain. Accelerated silver is always great, especially for children, super easy for them to take, tastes like water. It enhances the immune system's ability to devitalize those foreign pathogens that can cause weight gain. You know, the too many viruses, bacteria, candi candida, parasites, fungus, those all can lead to weight gain. Uh, accelerated silver also triggers anti-inflammatory mechanisms throughout the body as well. You can also use berberine HCL, and I just did a, a little hot topic on berberine. Berberine supports normal glucose and fat metabolism, keeping your insulin and blood glucose low. This can be a great um, additive for adults or kids that are trying to lose weight because it's blunting the blood sugar spike. So you're not going like this. You're going more like the molehill and it blunts the insulin spikes that lead to weight gain. I also like the HCL in the berberine HCL that I carry because that helps with the digestion of the proteins and fats that could be difficult to um, digest because your livers are backed up. That's why you got to do the liver flush, right? So make sure you're joining my group coaching so that I can get you through that liver flush. You can also look at the leaky gut bundle because most kids have leaky gut, most adults have leaky gut, and this is part of the reason for the weight gain because the processed foods, the GMOs and toxins cause leaky gut. You've got the mega spore biotic, the mega pre and the mega mucosa. They are healing the gut lining, feeding the right bacteria in the gut and balancing the microbiome. So what do you need to change? We need to get rid of the uh, processed foods, crowd it out with the good foods, the healthy vegetables. I don't care if they're carbs or not, okay? We just need to have the vegetables that you can use, the starches, the, the spaghetti squashes, the cucumbers, the carrots, tomatoes, salads, um, spaghetti squash, make spaghetti out of zucchini noodles, do that instead of the packaged foods. The processed foods are extremely hyper palatable and blunt your normal taste buds. Kids don't enjoy the natural sweetness of whole foods because of it. They become addicted to the chemicals and the hidden sugars that trick the brain into craving more. And these processed foods have emulsifiers in them which extend their life. And <clears throat> They bring fat and water together. Those emulsifiers destroy the mucosal lining in the gut, causing the neurons to retract. And then that is going to disengage that hormone, the CCK, that tells the brain to stop eating. So the signals from the CCK are shut down and never triggered to suppress your appetite. So you never stop eating. Then you want to eat even more and more and more of these processed foods. The gut now fails to register the amino acids and the fatty acids from the healthy food they're eating. And they are limiting the gut's ability to, to assess the nutrients and halt hunger. So you want to eliminate the fructose. Fructose metabolizes different than regular sugar or glucose. It's processed right in the liver, leading to fatty liver. It goes in and it goes to fatty liver, you guys. It's not stored as energy. So everything that you're eating that's fructose, all processed foods, all fruit juices go straight to fat. This doesn't include fruit because the fruit comes with the fiber that slows down the digestion. So having a piece of fruit a day, maybe two, is okay. We want to get rid of the sodas, fruit juice, processed foods with the high fructose corn syrup. Look for that ingredient in the packaged meats and dairies and other healthy foods. Get rid of the, the seed oils. Up to 50% of the calories in processed foods come from the seed oils like canola oil, peanut oil, rice bran oil, they are extremely inflammatory the body, increase liver fat, damage the DNA, damage the proteins and lead to obesity in kids. Increase protein intake for your kids. 
prioritize protein. If they don't eat their protein first, they don't get the sugar or the glucose or the carbs on their plate. This is going to simultaneously build lean muscle, eliminate bloat, kill the fat, heal the gut, keep the body in fat burning state, and try to get away from the chicken and the poultry. Look at my food guide for the, the vegetables to focus on, but I really want to focus on the protein with the kids. Eliminate the fake, fake sweeteners and eat your proteins first. That will help. Also have them exercise around their meal time and encourage less time on their electronics if you can. I know I went through a ton of information really quick. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. Join me for um, group coaching with the link below on Telegram. There's no downside. I teach you on a daily basis with tips and tools to enhance your health. Tell me what you learned today. How is it going with your parenting and with your kids? Do they have obesity? And is this something that you are struggling with? Leave a comment below and let me know. I teach you daily on my group coaching. Join me and the protocols and supplements I discussed are all found at sarahbandhealth.com. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram under Accelerated Health Products, across over 100 channels under Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show. If you like what you hear today, please hit the subscribe button and share with a few of your friends. My God, we need all the help we can get to spread this word to help our kids. Use coupon WELCOME10 for 10% off site-wide. Thanks again for joining us here on Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show, and have a great week. Music.